When you head to a Great Lakes beach, you might be eager to experience the sand and the waves. But for some folks, the fun lies in the rocks, fossils, and other items they can find along the shoreline. We brought two such beachcombers to Leland, Michigan to find out what it's all about. We're at the end of Reynolds Road, which is right next to Vans Beach. This is where they find the Leland Blue. See, my hunt, Chris, actually starts up here. Artist Geo Rutherford and self-described rock hound Chris Cooper both have a profound love for the Great Lakes. And both are scanning the beach in search of a treasure, but they're hunting for different things. The water is actually pretty nice. So here's a Petoskey stone there. I thought this was called Charlevoix, is it? Well, it, it yes, that's the, oh, like okay. the Petoskey stone is the hexagon area. Yeah. Charlevoix stone is the favosites. Cooper is looking for rocks and fossils. In Michigan, you're only allowed to collect on state land 25 pounds of rock per year, while Rutherford is seeking bits of plastic. When I go to state parks or I go to public land, like I, I don't collect a lot of rocks, but I collect plastic just to kind of get a picture of how much is ending up on Great Lakes beaches. They've come to a place called Vans Beach on the Lake Michigan shoreline just south of Leland, Michigan. Look at all the people on the beach. I mean, it's been so cold, I'm not surprised that people are out here. Cooper grew up in northern Michigan, spent a few summers with some friends living on a boat and sailing throughout the Great Lakes. He has a real love for and knowledge about rocks and what they can tell us about our past. Petoskey Stone is a Devonian period coral that grew I think it was about uh, 360 million years old, back when all of the water was salt water and we we're located more down towards the equator. This is a stromatopoid, and you can see the, the layering of the bands in there. It's like a fossilized algae. And this is Cladopora. Is that one with my stri like yep, it, it's a It's a type of uh, favocyte. It's another species of this. And this came from up by Marquette, and this is called Jacobsville Sandstone. So the glaciers brought it all the way down here. So this is kind of an interesting piece because it has, I don't see a whole lot of it that has the banding in it like that. There's lots to find here on Bands Beach, but when rock hounds come here, they're searching for one thing, the highly coveted Leland Blue. Is that Leland Blue? I think that might be that thing he said what looks like Leland Blue, but it's not. Leland is a, everybody's favorite, you know? The, everybody loves coming to Leland, look for the blue stone. Leland Blue is actually man-made. It's the leftover slag glass from an old iron foundry that operated in Leland in the 1800s. I grabbed this because I thought it was an interesting cool. contrast. Is it coal? So they might have used that in the smelters yeah. to smelt down the iron. These days, the bright blue glass is used to make jewelry. So this is something that I made. Sprinkler zone, cut a circle of plexiglass. You look right down in the water and it cuts the glare. Cooper uses a homemade bucket with a plexiglass bottom to spot some real beauties on the lake bed. It's just poking through. It's a big one? Yeah. Look at that one. <laughs> <gasps> wow, that is a big one. It looks like an egg. That's a beautiful blue. And whenever he hits the beach, Cooper always runs into people hoping to find a Leland blue. Oh, oh, oh my God. Beautiful. Nice, nice <laughs> fossil, too. Ten years ago, Cooper's passion for rock collecting <laughs> led him to create a Facebook group that now has nearly a quarter million members. I started Great Lakes Rocks and Minerals about 11 years ago, and it started off slow, you know, and it was a group where people could come, get their rocks and minerals identified, and now we have 240,000 members, you know, all around the Great Lakes. Look at that one! Tell me that's Leland Blue. Sure is. Yeah! There you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. While Rutherford appreciates the beauty of the rocks found scattered on the beaches, she is primarily focused on collecting plastic. Where that like debris line is, yep. that's where the plastic is. Right. And so I find myself, when I do the beach hunt, I go down on the rock and then back along that line, and that's where I hunt through to find plastic. Okay. 
While most would view plastic on the beach as trash, Rutherford creates art with the bits and pieces she finds. It's kind of like you do your beach hunting in different steps. Depends on the beach. Some of them are obviously much richer in their plastic content. Um, this one's really clean. I'm really impressed. I've only found a few like little microplastics. This is really common. I didn't know what this was for a long time, the shotgun, shotgun yep. wad. Along with bits of plastic, Rutherford finds all sorts of odd objects, such as Barbie doll heads or plastic army men, along with sand, and then uses all of it to create a unique work of art with test tubes. The tubes are assembled in the form of what she calls a book and each tube can be studied to learn about the unique qualities of a particular beach in the Great Lakes. So on there you have curl up and squirm. <laughs> it's a monarch mm -hmm. wing. This one's really fun. So see, it gives you an instruction. Turn the page. Oh, okay, so as you turn it, it shows shells, glitter, all of the different things that you find on the beach. Mm, some nurdles. And as yeah. you turn it, it, everything's different every time you turn it. I think this is kind of an interesting tube for the that kind of connects it to a traditional book and one that you take pages and you mm. turn them. It kind of gets you back to that. Right. Um, as I'm turning it, I can literally be like, wow, I'm at the beach. And yeah. Like these are all the little finds. Yeah, that's kind of a fun part of it. Um, yes, hello. Rutherford is also popular on TikTok, with more than one million regular viewers who tune in to watch her short, cleverly produced videos about the Great Lakes. I mean, I feel like what's interesting about connecting with Chris is that we're both interested in the same thing, even though it's different. And it's fun to talk to somebody who is so familiar with the rocks that litter the shoreline. And then on my side, I think it's interesting to to know that someone loves Great Lakes <laughs> trash. <laughs> yes. And it's all about being out in the outdoors, doing what you love and meeting interesting people. And, you know, I, I collect trash at the beach for just to clean the environment, you know? And somebody takes the trash and turns it into art, a book, you know, I. I can appreciate that. The exact number of rock hounds across the Great Lakes is unknown, but it's safe to say there are thousands. They flock to Lake Superior for colorful sodalite-rich cyanite or euperlite stones that glow when hit with ultraviolet light. There's quartz around Lake Huron, sandstone at Lake Erie, granite and limestone at Lake Ontario. You find the better stuff out, the deeper you go. Chris Cooper will tell you that some of the best treasures are found deep underwater. He recently dove into the chilly waters of Lake Superior off Michigan's Keweenaw Peninsula and spent two hours extricating a beautiful agate stone bigger than his fist. So here's one of those zones. You can see the beach rock has gone out. So this is where the waves have come together and the tide the riptide has removed all the sand off of the rocks. So this would be a good area to look. But here in Leland, it's all about the Leland Blue. Is this one? I just grabbed it in the water. Sure is. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, thank you. It was, it was your positive vibe. All right, good for you. That's the biggest one I've ever got. There you go. To me, it's kind of a modern day treasure hunt. You never know what you're gonna end up with at the end of the day, or even when you get home. Sometimes it takes it polishing it on your equipment to review the beauty of it. 